guys, it's Ken Kaplan from the New England Motorcycle Museum, and this is an extremely rare Canadian factory YZ125. This bike dominated the Canadian national circuit in 1980. This was ridden by Ross Peterson and the rest of the Canadian factory Yamaha guys. Um, this was owned by Dom Cilio, local co collector from Pennsylvania who bought it many, many moons ago and kept it in his private collection. It's been on display in the New England Motorcycle Museum, and it's a really, really rare and significant piece of moto history. If you check the rule books or check the record books, you'll find out that in 1978, Yamaha won all three Grand Slam of the AMA Championships, the 125, 250, and 500. They had Brock Glover on the 125, Bob Hanna's on the 250s. And this is a very, very, very uh, close replica to the OW factory bikes that they raced. A lot of the items on the factory work bikes, works bikes made it to this bike for 1980. And this one is a highly modified production motorcycle which um, starting at the front it's got a highly sought after set of these Fox factory work works forks these are in absolutely pristine condition there's no damage to the aluminum here uh, these are extremely valuable uh, period correct Fox factory forks we sold a set of these that were all rusted and messed up uh, for parts of restoration just the two twin fork tubes and the lower is sold for $2,300 this is the entire uh, front end conversion, it has aluminum triple clamps, the bar mounts, the Renthal bars, the forks, and the uh, uppers and lowers, and the, the chrome is in pristine shape. These forks are worth around $3,000 alone. Uh, the rest of the bike is absolutely bristling with factory trickery um, and uh, cool custom St. all parts on it. The engine has been completely restored by the previous owner, Dom. The, uh, uh, he said the Transmission components were Kashima coated. There are some type of specialty coating. I don't remember exactly what, what kind, but in the porting, it has a special porting on it. It has the, um, come around this side here, it has the cone style works exhaust pipe. Uh, the carburetor has been jetted to work with this pipe. The, he said it's got special porting in it and it's special ignition module. And uh, um, it's completely set up for, for absolutely uh, dominating vintage motocross racing or in 1980 winning a national we have the interview with the previous owner where he goes over a, a lot of what's been done to the bike some of the specifics and and that will be included in the auction so in addition the to the well. the built motor the, the the cone pipe uh it also has some really cool period correct uh these are like works pegs that are cast are are, are um created out of a not cast they're um uh, machined out of a block of aluminum and look at the bolts the special bolts that hold it in all over the bike there's special uh, cool custom bolts and, and custom trickery the uh, gold ch uh, brand new 520 gold chain it's got a brand new set of modern uh, Dunlop tires that uh, just hook up incredibly well the shock on it is also got some modifications check this out it's got a huge uh, billet uh, remote reservoir which cools the nitrogen in the oil makes it run a lot cooler this 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 year the 1980 was a huge upgrade from the 79 it has the front end the, 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 the standard factory front end and rear end had 50 millimeters or around two inches more suspension travel than the 79 and it's a completely new frame design based off of what they learned on the factory bikes in 78 and 79 they the, the down tube on this on the front here is a single down tube Earlier in the in the 70s, there were a double down tube. There's a single down tube uh, chromoly frame that's strong, rigid, and light. And if you look at the shock, the shock was no longer encased inside of the down tube, so the shock runs a lot cooler. In addition to having the remote reservoir for the first time in 1980, so uh, the brakes were the hubs were improved. It has better hubs. These are uh, these are um, gold sun rims front and rear with brand new Dunlop tires and tubes and rim strips, a brand new rear chain. The swing arm uh, on the, the 79, this is the factory production swing arm. Come around over this side, you'll see here, it's actually, it's very strong, lightweight, and uh, rigid design. It's triangulated, as you can see, which gives you the, the, the stiffness. The welds on here are just fantastic. This is a production swing arm for 1980. It was also longer than the 79 swing arm. So the swing arm was new, the frame was new, the, um, uh, shock design was new. This is a highly modified production shock. Obviously, a set of Fox factory forks on there. Matching Sunline rim on the rear. Um, the Canadian bikes ran white 
tanks, they were taking yellow tanks and painting them and putting the red graphics on there. This was a Canadian signature, the red and white uh, factory Yamaha signature uh, for the Canadian National bikes. The plastics are brand new on it. The paint job is brand new on it. This seat has special foam in it. Uh, again, it's got rental handlebars, uh, TP788 grips, brand new perches and levers. Um, on this side, you can see the factory style gullet peg, uh, a um, spring-loaded shifter. Just a beautiful bike. So, a lot of improvements for 1980 that, that were incorporated into the factory bike. This Canadian National bike was taken to another level. Uh, clearly with the Fox factory forks, the custom shocks, and the built motor. Um, if you look back at the history of the YZ125 since 1974, 45 years straight, this engine's won more motocross races probably than any other engine ever created. It's still relevant today. Matter of fact, Billy Ainsworth won the 125 support class at the National in Southwick this year on a, on a last year on a YZ, uh, this year on a different model bike, but they've won more races and one of the most popular engines ever made they're super durable they're fast reliable light and this one's completely tricky you know we, we we debated whether we should take it out and ride it in the in the in the grass here and risk getting it dirty but uh i think a bike like this begs to be ridden and i wanted you to hear how cool it sounds i'm i'm too big for a 125 i think i'm 6'2 about 230 with clothes on so it's really designed for a little bit smaller guy but the suspension is completely adjustable on this bike you have air suspension on the front so you can add more air pressure i got about 15 pounds in there now which works good for me you can change the viscosity of the fork oil you can actually change the weight of the springs or the preloading of the springs and one of the other features of the 1980 model that was different from the 79 is you can adjust right here on the back of the shop this is how you adjust the rebound dampening right here and you can also adjust the spring preload and you can also adjust the amount of nitrogen that is in the remote canister. So you can adjust the, the, the nitrogen gas pressure and the, the, the uh, shock rebound dampening. And you can, they also have two different springs Yamaha made that year for, for different weight riders. One was up to 180, the other one was like 180 to 220. So uh, one of the hallmarks of, of, a, of a classic vintage bike that we always check uh, to make sure it's, it's worthy of, of uh, being restored is the frame rails. And if you look at the frame here, this is like a brand new frame. I don't feel any, I don't feel a single ding in the bottom of this frame. In this frame rail right here, it looks brand new. The pipe looks brand new because it, it was brand new when they when they put it on. Uh, the um, frame rail on this side is in brand new condition. Clearly, this is not one of the bikes that they raced, and if they did it, they was only raced for a short time. This might have been a backup bike or, or a um I'm not really sure. I just know this isn't this isn't a bike with a lot of hours on it. Usually, one that goes through a whole national series, or maybe it's a replacement frame. The uh, serial number on the on the bike right up here at the top is um, 006, 000689. So it's a low production model bike. Uh, I think it says 8R3 are the first three numbers on there, and I believe there's a um, Canadian. Yeah, there's a Canadian. See this right here? Canada NSVAC. There's a Canadian sticker on the front. So uh, October October of 1979, the original factory Yamaha stickers on here. I don't believe this frame's ever been repowder coated or anything. I believe this is original paint on here. So just a stunning, gorgeous, classic Yamaha Canadian factory national bike. So if you have any questions about it, give us a call at 860-454-7024. Starts first, kick. Um, the bike's gonna last forever if you take care of it. It's on display inside the New England Motorcycle Museum today. Uh, we also have financing options for classic bikes. We can help you on the shipping, or if you want to leave it in the museum here as long as you wish, we'd like to, to have. We'd love, love to keep it here. And it also is a tax deductible uh, purchase if you if you are a uh, looking to invest in your retirement. The United States. Internal Revenue Service, IRS, recognizes classic motorcycles as part of a retirement investment. So you can actually write off this if you talk to your accountant. You can write it off as an investment on your single employee pension plan. So that's about, about all I have to, to say about it. Kenny, is there anything you'd like to add? or No, we can ship these bikes anywhere in the States inexpensively. So message us your postal code for a quote. We can also offer financing on classic motorcycles such as the one you're looking at. Uh, 
like Ken said, the IRS recognizes these as investment quality machines. Uh, so with if your accountant knows what they're doing, uh, they, you can actually invest in classic motorcycles and, and other assets through a Roth, through a 401k, or through your single employee pension plan. So take it away, Ken. The other thing I always recommend doing, grab the rear wheel and shake the bike. There is zero play in it. The wheel bearings are brand new condition, like just out of the box. The swing arm bearings, brand new. There's not a ding in the frame rail, not a ding in the pipe. This thing is as good as a bike that just came out of a crate. As far as the, the, the um, bearings, uh, the shock bearings, the uh, all the bearings, uh, everything's super tight on it. And um, it runs perfectly, absolutely zero play in, in the front wheel bearings. Um, the brakes work perfectly. What else can I say, man? It's, a, it's like it's like a brand new Canadian factory bike. So, good luck finding a nicer one. I don't think there's one out there. And this may be your last chance if you have ever thought of, or dreamed of owning something this trick. They just they just don't come up very often. We've been we've sold thousands of bikes here at Kaplan Cycles in the last six years since we opened the shop in 2013 at this location. And this is the first Canadian factory bike we've seen come through. So. Uh, it's one in a million. God bless Canada for building kick-ass works bikes like this. God bless Japan and God bless America. I'm gonna bring it down to detail shop. Gonna give it one last clean on the tires and put it in the museum where it'll be until you come and pick it up. So good luck, Benny. God bless America.